What is the Black experience at Disney? Learn more about it on episode 38 of the Theme Park Hipster Show. Hey, Theme Park Hipsters, it's your host, Nikki J, the owner of ThemeParkHipster.com, where I help you plan the best solo theme park vacation with the latest tips, reviews, personal stories, and more. Today, I have a special episode just for you. But first, I want to make sure that you go ahead and grab your free Disney itinerary guide that will be in the show notes. It's your instant download to give you one day game plans on how to conquer each Disney park. Guys, I am so excited about today's episode. We will be talking about what it's like to travel to the Disney parks as a black person. Our guest today is June, who goes by Frost and Fantasyland on Instagram, and is the owner of the website AfrosandPixieDust.com. She is a social media influencer who is on an endless pursuit of happiness and new hairstyles. She is a wife and mom to two future Imagineers. June is also a neonatal nurse practitioner and a Disney blurred with a love of sprinkling a little pixie dust into everyday life. She is one of my favorite Disney influencers. So let's welcome June to the Theme Park Hipster Show. Hi, June, and welcome to the Theme Park Hipster Show. How are you doing today? I am well, Nikki. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being a guest. Now, everyone knows that we are going to talk about the Black experience at the Walt Disney World Parks and just the parks in general. But first, I want everyone to know just a little bit about you. So um, my name is June. I am from New York, born and raised and may never leave, possibly. (laughs) I mean, I don't know what this weather now might actually happen, but (laughs) I um, am a nurse practitioner and I do still work as a nurse practitioner um, in New York in the neonatal ICU. I've been doing that for 10 years. I am a mom of two. Mm-hmm. I have a, a six-year-old daughter and a three-year-old son. I am a crafter. Uh, I'm a baby blogger. And um, <laughs> I'm a Diz Blurred. And uh, everyone really knows me by my love of Disney stuff. <laughs> so you are a nurse practitioner up in New York. And you're a mom. You're a wife. You got all of that going on. How did you even get into the life of Disney? What made you fall in love with Disney? I've always enjoyed Disney movies. Mm -hmm. Um, I grew up on The Little Mermaid and Aladdin. And I rocked my Lion King videotape until it popped. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) That was my joint Mm -hmm. Um, growing up. Funny enough, I never had any interest in visiting the parks when I was a kid. Like, I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'm not going there. Oh, wow. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So my first visit actually was as an adult um, with my now husband. It was like one of our first, like, travel dates. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We won, like, you know, you quote unquote win tickets or something, a trip. (laughs) And it's like a timeshare, you know, advertisement. (laughs) So we're like, let's just do it, you know. And uh, that was our, my first experience actually in the Disney parks and kind of set off a whole new appreciation for the work that the animators do, mm-hmm. um, you know, in the, in the animated films and seeing the Imagineers bring that to life. I was just like, wow, the creativity here and just the, the level of skill. And, and I'm a technical person, so I just love looking at that kind of stuff and seeing people be able to create these things it was just so amazing to me and I kind of set it off for the park love <laughs> oh wow and when you came with your husband the first time did you guys do all of the parks or did you start at the Magic Kingdom uh, no and no we actually went to Hollywood <laughs> Studios first we went oh um, wow <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I know. Weird enough, we went around Christmas, if mm-hmm. not Christmas Day, was our first time going, and we had gone to Hollywood Studios, and we just had such a great time there. There was like a Christmas parade, and they had around the time we were there, they had some classic cars they were showing off, and I mean, I don't know why fake snow was so amazing to me, <laughs> but I just was blown away, and I was like, this 
is where I want to be on Christmas. And we had made it a point to try to come down every Christmas for a couple of years, you know, mm-hmm. before the kids came. And um, that was our tradition after that one trip. It was so magical for us. Wow. All from Hollywood Studios. That is special. <laughs> right? <laughs> what a thought, right? <laughs> now, I heard you mention something. You said the term disblurred. And I've heard that around before. What exactly is a disblurred? I like to say I've coined the term. Okay. Um, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? I, I don't know. Um, but basically, um, a blurred, if people don't know what an actual blurred is, um, it's a, a phrase that Black nerds like to use to, to call themselves, to mm-hmm. um, refer to themselves. Um, and so I wholeheartedly am a card carrying member of the blurred community. But, you know, my main passion in the blurred community is Disney. And mm-hmm. so I just tack this on there. So there are Dis nerds and mm-hmm. there is a community that calls themselves Dis nerds. But oh, okay. I, I kind of, you, you know, veer it. towards. The Diz Blurred. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, it's like you love all of the fandom, but you're particularly a fan of the Disney parks and you're a nerd and you're black. So Diz Blurred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty that's, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so with all yeah. of that, what has been your experience at the Disney parks as a black woman? So I would say, fortunate for me, um, I feel I've had a pretty positive experience in the parks, which is why I'm always willing to go back so Mm -hmm. much. I've always felt welcomed. I've always felt free to be myself. Um, I've never kind of felt any negative microaggressions, if that's a good way to describe it. Mm -hmm. People ask about my hair all the time, but, you know. (laughs) Did they ask to touch it? (laughs) But that's the thing. I've never been asked. Okay. And that is one thing I do appreciate. I don't know if that's a part of the training, but personally for me, and um, one thing about me is I try to express myself with my hair. And that's one thing I've always appreciated. So I've, I've always gotten, you know, compliments and questions, but never that kind of invasion of space or, um, you know, taboos thrown at me. So I felt like my personal experience has always been positive. Just being in the parks or being a park goer. I remember the first time I met you at Epcot in person. I was like, oh my God. And when she says she loves to be creative with her hair and try new things, I mean, it it was even hard for me to not ask, can I touch it? (laughs) Because she did, (laughs) she had like Rapunzel. I mean, I mean, oh my God. It was like down to her ankles almost. And she rocked the style, everything around Epcot and everyone was stopping her. Like she was a part of the Disney cast. And it was, man, you guys have to check out her Instagram page. It is amazing. She does some amazing work. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm trying. I'm learning <laughs> as I go. Um, I find things that are inspiring and I have to at least try it out, even if it comes out not optimal. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that the, the Rapunzel lock I really loved and they, you know, were really important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I've I had locks for 10 years and you know I know what it feels like to you know have locks and have people kind of look at you some type of way mm-hmm. um and I I kind of wanted to portray Rapunzel as a woman with long locks and so I wanted to you know try it out and it was very fun that was one of my favorite hairstyles ever Oh, it was amazing so I know that's kind of do you consider that cosplaying which if you guys don't know cosplaying is kind of like you dress up um, in a costume yeah. and you play as one of your favorite characters. That's the best way I can describe it. You um, have a better definition than I do. <laughs> so, yes. And I will say, so cosplaying, um, the actual art of cosplaying is where fans of different movies, shows, genres uh, recreate the look of <laughs> Their favorite characters, characters they like, mm-hmm. you know, characters that spoke to them. In the Disney community, it's not necessarily considered cosplay because when you um, go to the parks, there's actually a rule that anyone that's 14 and over can't dress in costume. Mm-hmm. And so it's created what has been coined Disney bounding. Oh, And yes. that is actually a form of dressing up where you wear regular clothes and they're either styled like a character, um, usually in the color scheme 
of the character you're going for, or um, maybe a a piece here or there um, that resembles the character's personality, or you have accessories um, that are similar to the character's likes or sidekicks or in, in, in things of that nature. So it's called Disney bounding. And um, when you add accessories and wigs, mm-hmm. then that can kind of lean into cosplay Okay. Um, I I call it hair play when I incorporate <laughs> hair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, that's my spin on it. But it's it's Disney bounding when you're in the parks and you're kind of dressed in regular clothes to look like a particular character that you like. Wow, I, I really like that. And thank you for clearing that up because this whole time I forgot how strict, you know, Disney and most of the theme parks are about confusing guests as to if you are a part of the park so that thank you so much for that with the disney bounding have you ever have you met other black disney bounders either online or out at the parks funny you should ask because (laughs) just this past weekend i got to meet up with an amazing black woman in disney california adventure oh wow Um, yes and it was it was uh, the most delightful experience ever. We've been following each other on Instagram for a while now, and um, I always admire her Disney bounds. And I was like, when I come to California, we have to meet up. And I was so <laughs> happy we were able to do this this past weekend, despite the rain. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did. We ended up Disney bounding as two members, um, the Black Panther movie, two characters from the Black Panther movie. Um, I did a Koye, and she did Nakia. And it oh. was so much fun. And unfortunately, Black Panther and Okoye couldn't be there um, that no. day. They were, yeah, they were dodging raindrops because oh. you know, they got it like that. But yeah. I was like, I have five <laughs> hours here. I'm making the most of it. <laughs> um, but you know what? It, was, it didn't even matter. I had such a good time just being able to meet her and um, spend time in the park that... <laughs> It, it it didn't even ruin my day. That the rain, nothing could have ruined my day. Just being able to go and and meet with you know someone who shared a passion that I do it looks like me it was such a great experience. Man, that is so cool. And I know that it's kind of hard to even find. Well, at least I thought it was until I found you, and then you told me about all these other people <laughs> on Instagram and in the world of online where you can meet other yes. Disney founders. And do you, can you name any kind of hashtags? I'm trying to think of some hashtags that oh, yes. other people can I find. Can. <laughs> yes, I can definitely do that. So, um, so Disblurred is a hashtag I keep on my um, profile, mm-hmm. um, on my bio. Mm-hmm. for other people to use other hashtags i like to use disney poc disney moms of color mm-hmm. black girl disney that's another instagram page that you know highlights a lot of people of color that go to disney and that who share the same love that we have let me think if i can think of any more oh that's there good because is... before i met you oh. i didn't even know <laughs> wonderful poc is another page that highlights people of color 39 square you can use it as a hashtag three nine Square. That's uh, another page that highlights people of color. And there's more and more popping up. And I'm like, keep them coming. Let's go. Yes. There's, there's enough room for everybody. So guys, uh, now yeah. you know <laughs> you know where to find all of us. We're here. We are a community and we are a community that Disney is paying attention to. And I know you mentioned Black Panther and I know we're all excited. We're all happy to have that. What do you feel about having that incorporated in a park? Do you think that might be a direction that Disney may be going towards? Having Black Panther in the park, I mean, if they build it, we sure will come, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I think it I think it would be I know there's a lot of red tape between Walt Disney World and um you know, and getting the Marvel characters into Walt Disney World. I'm so happy that we have, you know, them in in Disney California Adventure. But, you know, when that red tape clears up, it oh, would yeah. be amazing to have Wakanda in Epcot or have Wakanda in Africa. I know there's already an Africa section in Animal Kingdom, but... Mm-hmm. Let you put Wakanda in there and you have a ride where, you know, you're doing the chase scene from the movie or something yeah. to that effect. And have it hidden, hidden somewhere. It, exactly. <laughs> I mean, 
I already have a couple of places I would love for it to be, but you know, I don't work there. So I could just write a little love note. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. you never Rose. know. <laughs> I, yeah. I think that it, I mean, it'll be, it may even be a Mecca. I don't know. I think that it would be just an amazing thing, an amazing tribute, amazing honor. That movie in general, just for what it represents and not just the actual movie, the storyline, but the fact that it was a Black director, a Black mm-hmm. writer, to have the costume designer. This was a real experience. This was a real love story to the Black community. And that's how I felt reading about the movie and seeing the movie and seeing how the effect it had on everyone who was a part of it. And I love how you put that. A love story mm-hmm. to the community. Now, I know we talk about how we are excited about that possibility, but in the meantime, how do you think we've been represented at the parks? Saying like, when you're at the park, do you feel that you see a lot of us at the park? Do you feel like we're there or you just kind of feel isolated when you're there? So that's actually a really good question. The funny thing is when we started visiting Disney Park as a more traditional thing, I was just so happy to be there and to (laughs) see all the designs and to just take it all in. Yeah. And you see see the happy faces. And my husband actually was the one that pointed out, like, uh, I kind of feel <laughs> like a raisin in the oatmeal. It didn't really hit me until he kind of pointed it out. And then you kind of would notice it. It didn't necessarily make me feel awkward, but then now I kind of felt like you gotta kind of spot, you know. Yeah. <laughs> someone who you recognize just to, just as a as a curiosity. And Over the years, I want to say that it has changed a lot. You see a lot more Black families that come and, you know, make this their, if it's not the annual trip, make just make the trip in general. You see more younger, Black young adults that go to the parks by themselves or they're getting jobs there. Tiana, I want to say kick the door down and I'm so thankful for Tiana and I'm thankful for all the cast members who are friends of hers and you know all the other performers who have stepped out and took that leap and took that chance to maybe put themselves in a vulnerable situation hopefully get cast to be performers there and I am always grateful for the Festival of the Lion King Chorus because Mm -hmm. I will never miss that show whenever I go. The beauty of the show, just the beauty of having them there Mm -hmm. as the headliners. Yes. Um, And they've been a staple. You know, if you want, you want some flavor, you go to that Festival of the Lion King show, they're going to sing your heart out, (laughs) you know? Well, the power. (laughs) Yeah, it's the power, the magic of that show. It's, it's like it, it gets into your spirit, it gets into your soul and like the drum beats, it's like all up in you. And man, I don't know about anybody else, but I know me, when it gets into my spirit, I start, I get a little goosebumps and <laughs> they start singing when, uh, yeah. you know, the, um, uh, what's his name? The song, come on. I don't want to say it all here, but uh, <laughs> the tradition of my spirit, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. When that, when said, I'm like, oh God. <laughs> Yes, but you know, they've they've been there forever. They've been staples there and you know, that show I feel like if you if you want to get a little touch at home, that show <laughs> has always been there. Yeah. And I'm very I'm very grateful for that. And I'm grateful for the fact that, you know, there are more black families that that have decided to spend time with the, with each other in a place like that. I totally agree. And um, as far as what I see as our representation, I am on the same lines with you. First, when you're there, especially like me and you, and we love the magic of Disney. When you get there as a Black person, sometimes you're just so engulfed in the magic of Disney that you don't even pay attention to anyone else. You're kind of like laser focused on everything you want to do. But then you start to notice, oh, snap, I'm the only one here. But if you do see that Black family come by, you kind of give them that Hey, what's up? <laughs> I see uh-huh. that. <laughs> exactly hey. that nod. <laughs> yeah, that nod. <laughs> but it is it's, it's you don't even realize it until someone brings it to your attention and then you realize, wow, I'm really the only one here. Out of all these yeah. people, I'm passing by thousands of people and maybe for every thousand I see like a family. And but it is getting better. I do see a lot of people there and maybe because of this 
the um, age of social media where people's Disney pics on Instagram kind of inspire you to want to go out there. So I'm with you on that 100%. Yeah. I also think Blackish because their oh. Disney World episode is yeah. like <laughs> one of my top three yes. <laughs> Disney World episodes. Honestly, I rank it above the Full House episode. It I is. Don't care, fight me, <laughs> whatever. But <laughs> yes, that episode that- was amazing. Especially my favorite scene was when they were, I think they were in the line for. Um, Pirates of the Caribbean and they walked past I don't know which ride it was but I just remember that VIP walk when they were yes. looking like yeah I was like yes goals that- hashtag goals <laughs> <Yes>. someday <laughs> but for sure yes that was the best everyone yeah. knows that feeling when you get the yes. fast pass <laughs> versus when you're you know in general pop especially, especially <laughs> on flight of passage and you're like bye bye oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah that's so necessary <laughs> um, um, and that is so amazing. Now, with, with all of us knowing about how we're represented and our, our experience at the Disney parks, what do you think are some myths that people may have with Black people just being at Disney? What do you think are some myths? Um, I, I mean, I think that maybe not so much recently, but um, that, that Black people didn't go. Mm, and yeah. for whatever reason, people assume that. Um, I just think that, you know, you're, like I said, if you build it, they will come. If there's something for you there, then you're going to go and see it. And, you know, I'm not going to front. Disney is not cheap, Mm -hmm. especially when you have a family. So why would you spend all that money and not necessarily you are going to spend money on on things that you want to experience? And so I think um, as time has gone on, now that there's more representation, now that, you know, even in the advertising, yeah. you know, there's more families of color that are seen at the parks. People feel more comfortable to be there, to go, to spend their money and to invest and take a chance on this kind of big of an experience. I totally agree. And it's really making the experience at Disney so much more fulfilling as a black person going to the parks and especially me because you know I do my solo trips and I know you mentioned yeah. you see a lot of people going alone now have you ever done the park solo I did I don't know if it's official solo it was a pseudo solo uh-huh. <laughs> it's still- um, I've, I've, <laughs> I've been in the park solo for sure uh-huh. um, because I'm a sun up to sun down kind of Person. Oh, you! Yeah. You my type yeah, of person. Not, yeah, my type of person. <laughs> yes, <laughs> not everyone can hang. <laughs> and no, I'm not leaving with you just because you. No, I'm kidding. But, <laughs> I love that. Um, you know, sometimes you just you just got to see your fireworks show, or you know, you you, you just want to walk around. But yeah, I've I finally checked that off my bucket list. Uh, I've gone to Epcot mainly um, solo and Hollywood Studios I've done solo as well. And I mean, Epcot hands down is like the place to go. Oh, yeah. Solo, just hanging out in the shops Mm -hmm. and going to each country and trying new things and trying to communicate. (laughs) It's so much fun to like communicate with people in their language in the different Uh countries in Epcot. Uh, I just thought that was so much fun. And so you think it's um, the freedom that you get when you're solo that you can just kind of just take your time and wonder as long as you want when you're on that solo trip? Oh, definitely. You know, when you're in a group, you got to make sure everyone's pseudo happy or a little bit of, you know, comfort Mm -hmm. there. (laughs) How many breaks do you have to take? You know, all depends yeah. on who you with. Yes. <laughs> what you eat, what you don't eat. I want to yeah. stay for this. I want to go there. You know, when you're by yourself, you do whatever you feel like, or you do nothing at all. You can sit on a bench and just watch people walk by, or you can go on every single ride or your one favorite ride ten times. Do whatever you want, however you want. You can eat as much as you want, and I come to eat. So mm-hmm. don't. Don't try to stop me. (laughs) It's easiest to do, you know, when you're by yourself. Wow. Well, thank you so much, June. Um, I know that 
this subject matter, we're just kind of scratching the surface and we definitely want to elaborate more in the future. I'm just so happy that you came over here and talked to me about just the Disney experience as a Black person because I could not find anybody else out there talking about it. And I want people to know and to feel confident that, yes, you can do Disney. It's okay. We here. We got you covered. <laughs> you don't have to worry about yes. anything. We out here. That's what yeah. I like to say. <laughs> we are out here. You just, you know, you just got to find us. The community is there. We're growing. We're finding each other thanks to social media. That's mm-hmm. one of the beauties of it. And I'm, I'm enjoying finding this tribe. Yeah, Everyone that I've met so far has been amazing. This has been a blessing. And I'm sure there's lots of people out there that think they're, they're by themselves or they would like to go to the park or like to talk to someone about, you know, what they're into and they don't think they can find someone. We're out here. We are. Where can everybody find you? I have my uh, Instagram page, which is Frozen Fantasyland. That's my little pet project. Mm -hmm. where I do a lot of my, or I display a lot of my Disney bounds and my hair bounds or hair play, Um, along with my family. um, We we like to dress up together when we do go to the parks together and when we just do little family activities. And um, I also am working on a blog and that one is called Afros and Pixie Dust. You guys definitely check out her Instagram page. It is beautiful it is amazing i love watching you and your family and your adventures you guys oh, must you. check out check it out and definitely go by her blog give her some support check out all of her different stories she has stories on there about yeah i saw a story you did about your daughter and her natural hair with disney and all that stuff like yeah that's a big question parents have do i even mm-hmm. bother to go to the hair shop just do it <laughs> just yes. do it for the thank experience. you thank you that's <laughs> a big question <laughs> it is and they probably won't get it right, but it's okay. If your daughter's <laughs> smiling at the end of the experience, then you have gotten what you paid for. Yes. Thank you so much. And you guys, I want to go over some of those hashtags again. That way you can we can all connect. There's Disblurred hashtag, Disney POC, P as in Paul, O C as in Cat. Then there's Disney Moms of Color, Black Girl Disney, Wonderful POC, and Three nine square. All those hashtags. Look it up on Instagram, and we'll all be there. We have one big community, and let's go ahead and just do this. Thank you, awesome. guys. Thank you so much again. Thank you for having me. Welcome back, guys. Wasn't that such an incredible chat? It really opened up my eyes, and it also gave me a new perspective on someone else's experience at the Disney parks. Let me know what your experience has been as a black person at Disney. You can DM me over at Instagram, just finding Theme Park Hipster, or you can reach out to me over on the Theme Park Hipster Facebook group. I'd love to chat with you and continue the discussion over there. Be sure to rate and review this episode. That way I can continue to bring you the best solo Theme Park hacks tailored just for you. And it also helps others find the show too. Don't forget to grab your Disney game plan guide in the show notes today. You can get that instant download, print it out, or you can just view it on your phone and check out each ride while you're at the parks. Thank you once again so much for taking the time to listen to the Theme Park Hipster Show. I want you to know that you are my friend and you are my family, whether you know that or not. And until next time, happy park hopping hipsters. The content on the Theme Park Hipster Show represents my own and not those of any organizations or activity mentioned. I am just someone here who likes to share my own stories to you and hope that I can help you have the best vacation ever.